go ahead and continue, Peter. Yeah, absolutely. Did, did Roxanne want to comment on anything? Oh, yeah, good question. No, we were going to listen primarily. Okay. Oh, no. okay. Oh. As denoted in our orientation guide that anyone can download, uh, we present what is termed a central database, which is a referential hub for all human ideas to be essentially evaluated by. Uh, this database operates through pattern recognition, which is very simply known as AI or artificial intelligence. There's nothing scary about it. Uh, for those that aren't really familiar with this, I mean, AI on a basic level is nothing more than code that can find and link relevant patterns for the logical culmination of a particular recognition. You know, when you go to a Word document and you spell check something, uh, a very simple artificial intelligence engine scans the patterns of the incorrectly spelled word that you punched in and the fragment, and it can basically orient around that to find what that pattern represents. Uh, and usually it takes a few tries sometimes, but it's a very primitive thing that that is what the artificial intelligence very simply is. A more complex version of this I'd like to throw out, uh, which I've been studying recently, and I met somebody that's been working with the individual, and uh, in which it very closely mirrors what the Venus Project proposes, what Jacques has proposed in a more totality-oriented way, meaning taking in the whole of human knowledge, is done by Wolfram Research called WolframAlpha.com. It's a very primitive search engine that this individual put together, very, very profound implications. The idea is that we can sort of just type this in, this kind of question in, however we think of it. I wanted to use it myself, a bit like Galileo got to use his telescope 400 years ago. But I wanted to look not at the astronomical universe, but at the computational universe. It's a big idea. Actually, I think it'll eventually be seen as probably the single biggest idea that's emerged in the past century. It's the idea of computation. There's an inexhaustible supply of programs out there. The challenge is to see how to harness them for human purposes. The goal is to go much further and, and very broadly to, uh, to democratize um, all of this kind of knowledge. We meet at a time of great tension. Now, I've gone through all that little spiel and someone listening might think, oh, well, what does this have to do with democracy? Well, once we realize that all real problems are technical and all solutions are solvable by taking in as much data as possible, organized by causal reasoning and pattern recognition, evaluated, tested by the scientific method, we then begin to understand that true social involvement falls mostly in the realm of human need. So anyway, back on point, democracy in this context is really about finding consensus with values. And I'm sorry to say, values are not equal. Some are more correct and hence sustainable, while others are outdated, just plain wrong and hence unsustainable. While, you know, while that statement might sound controversial, I'm sorry, but demons do not cause illness. We do not need to burn witches anymore, and people with Tourette syndrome are no longer considered to be possessed by the devil as they were in the past by a culture that didn't know any better. So. If the goal is human survival, then we can assess values, we can qualify values, and consider the effect they have on the process of human survival. Violence can even break out in supposedly restrained groups, such as rival political parties. But as a basic example, I would just say for those that don't quite follow me that are listening, uh, if you have a value where you want to go out and pollute the stream uh, with toxic waste in your neighborhood, I'm sorry, uh, people are going to drink it, they're going to die, uh, you might injure yourself. So your value is intrinsically unsustainable to nature and yourself. Values are not equal, and the real revolution is the revolution of human values shifting towards scientific understanding, to put it very simply. So. In a resource-based economy, we arrive at decisions by the scientific method, not mass consensus. 
using a referential database which can calculate technical solutions. Since democracy as we know it incorrectly assumes that you know, the mass public is in fact adequate, adequately informed on every given technical issue, which of course is a huge stretch, along with the historical reality that mass influence and propaganda can steer the masses in an entirely rational way. Well, Bennett, as they say in the Bible, there are many, many ways to light your The demands of human opinion will always be second to demands of physical, natural law if our collective species' goal is to actually survive on this planet. And as Doug pointed out, I will paraphrase, we cannot impose our views on the world. We can only extract them. How do we organize our lives in the artificial world of the human zoo? I mean, if you think that freedom is going to the mall and buying things, well, then I guess you're correct. But beyond that, you have no freedom, you have no choice, you are ruled by an elite. So I, for those that continue to harp on this idea, this illusion, this convoluted idea that in a resource-based economy, their, their valued opinions will be removed, I ask them to take a reflective look back at what they're doing today. Because I'm sorry, you have no choice. It's not there, it hasn't existed, it hasn't existed for thousands of years. And the dawn of what you could call a democracy where people actually have the ability to communicate ideas with the interface that we I have just described, this, 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 this system where you can actually evaluate things objectively, not just mass opinion, but a, a database of information. This is where the dawn of true social participation, participation and progress will emerge. It will be the ultimate paradigm shift toward scientific reasoning as opposed to the whims of whatever distorted value that is the flavor of that generation. You can't BS nature. The whole point of science is to try and allow us to explain our own conditions. And so it's very important that if we are going to govern ourselves in a logical, proper way, then it would make sense that our social constructs be based on the very system that governs us. We are regulated by nature whether we like it or not. No matter what we invent on this planet or how many toys and bells and whistles people have, if, let's say, a giant rock were to come and crash into this planet, you're done. You cannot fight that, no matter what you think might happen. The system is reinforcing elements that people are acting upon for their own personal gain. Therefore, there's a reason why their behavior is such. The monetary system is not just a medium of exchange. And even though it is a medium of exchange, there's a reason why the exchange actually has to occur, because of scarcity. If there was no scarcity, there'd be no reason for a medium of exchange. And hence, scarcity is money. Hence, people have to fight for money. And hence, differential advantage, gaming strategy, hence dishonesty, hence corruption, hence the world you see around you. Now, uh, was there anything that you wanted to add, Roxanne, or uh, just want us to continue with the conversation? Continue the conversation. Yeah, go ahead. Excellent.